cover at once. If the foundations of Hollywood power seemed to be coming apart during the 1960s, the rest of the world was also one button push away from nuclear annihilation. One irreverent young filmmaker captured the rebellious spirit of a new generation and the madness of mutual assured nuclear destruction. You're talking about mass murder, General, not war. Mr. President, I'm not saying we wouldn't get our hair must, but I do say no more than 10 to 20 million killed, tops, uh, depending on the breaks. Dr. Strangelove had a kind of irreverence that Hollywood hadn't seen since the 1940s comedies of Preston Sturgis, but Stanley Kubrick's black humor and cynicism in Strangelove also showed that the 60s were going to be a very different decade. It was producer star Kirk Douglas who helped Stanley Kubrick get his first big chance with the anti-war film Paths of Glory in 1957. It was followed by the big budget Spartacus. Even after a rush of critical acclaim, Kubrick faced studio indecision about his next project. His response to the allure of Hollywood was to shun it. He wasn't the first or the last. In the 1920s, D.W. Griffith had tried to distance himself from Hollywood when he built his own studio in Mamaroneck. When Stanley Kubrick moved to England, his independence only added to his appeal and his price tag. There is a universal rule in Hollywood, and I think it's, it's true today as it was then, that if you want something, they will not give it to you. If you don't want something, they will throw it at you. 